All right. So, um, Stephen, it's uh, it's good to be able to to chat with you and um, spend some time together today. You said you're in the Philadelphia area. I am. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we were both before we hit record. We were both just talking about some of the adjustments that we've been making over the last uh, week and a half, last ten days or so, just in light of COVID nineteen and everything that's happening uh, in terms of the transitions that our country's workforce is making. Um, yeah. This so. is yet another remote meeting for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, this is this is the norm. This is the right. norm. Um, and that said, if a, an animal or uh, a child, which still qualifies as an animal, I guess, but if, yeah. if anything pops into either of our screens, we're just going to continue to yep. uh, to press on, right? Uh, we're used to that at this point. So um, you are, uh, you're um, relatively new to your role at Charity Navigator. And so... Uh, I was excited to read some content that you had put out on LinkedIn in the last uh, week or so and, and really want to talk to you about the, uh, the experiments and the things that you're doing at Charity, Charity Navigator. But at the outset, uh, I'm really curious about your path. Uh, I've, yeah, looked at, sure. I've looked at your LinkedIn, but I, I want to know, like, give me your story. Talk to me about how, yeah. how you got to the spot. Yeah, um, no, I appreciate the question. Uh, I, I've spent my essentially my entire life in the nonprofit sector with the exception of one year working overseas. Um, and, and, uh, it has been a pretty varied path. So I feel like I've worked at, at any number of different types of nonprofits over the last, last many years, which sort of set me up for this, for this gig with charity navigator in a way that was like, uh, a perfect fit, um, in many ways. And so, uh, just a, a couple of a couple of highlights. My, um, I got into not only nonprofits but nonprofit technology because I wanted to sort of make a make a difference, like a lot of people. Um, I was an AmeriCorps um, member, doing in a public school in Philadelphia, about a mile from where I live right now, and it was the year two thousand, height of the dot com boom. My kids didn't have any computers in the school. And I, you know, we were already behind and I was like, well, how do I get my kids computers, you know? Um, and I got connected to the United Way in, in Center City, Philadelphia. They uh, saw sort of the passion I had for that and said, we're starting a digital divide program with IBM. You know, why don't you, why don't you run it for us? And I, and I was 22, 23 at the time, didn't know any better, um, took the little bit of, uh, we had a couple of AmeriCorps members and a little bit of money from IBM to get started and some equipment and um, built a digital divide program that eventually um, turned into a tech consulting for nonprofits and uh, sort of a nationally recognized. We were probably the first um, municipal Wi-Fi networks. We were targeting low income neighborhoods with a couple of our partners in Philadelphia and built a whole home computer distribution program and training uh, and, and, and sort of address the digital divide in a, in a really new way using new technologies. You know, and at the time we were working with Cisco engineers, some of the best in the world, and they weren't, sh they had not really done Wi-Fi campus deployments. And so it was, it was a learning experience for the private sector as well. Hmm. Um, so that sort of got me down the path of nonprofit technology, not because I have an at, like an academic background in it. I have a mm -hmm. passing interest in it, but it was more um, uh, the quickest way or the fastest path to to an impact, mm -hmm. and and that's sort of the place that I played in, um, sort of then throughout the rest of rest of my career. I did some management consulting in 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 Boston where I went to grad school. Um, and I went to grad school because I thought business practices and policy are important components of nonprofits that um, sometimes are a little undersold. And, and so went to school to sort of bone up on those things so mm -hmm. I could be a nonprofit leader. Um, and then spent the last number of years in a, in a think tank or action tank in D.C. at the National Aquarium in Baltimore. Uh, and the most recent um, job was with the American Friends Service Committee, which is the NGO of the Quakers, and they do activism in the U.S. and um, peace building, uh, sort of 
internationally and they won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1948 for their peace building efforts. Mm. And so they are drawing on a long Quaker tradition of listening and community building and, 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 and wanting and striving for peace. And so um, all that journey brought me to Charity Navigator, all that nonprofit experience, I feel like I'm leveraging now in this position. And it's a new position. This is it is a yeah. first for a charity navigator. Why don't you take a minute and explain the, uh, sure. the role so that you're it's in? A, yeah, it's it's a, it's a combination of the engineering team and um, our analytics team and our program team, and and really the biggest the biggest sort of function, if you will, is evolve the ratings. Hmm. Um, we've we've sort of had the same rating system for the last six or seven years, but really it's pretty similar to when we launched um, in its focus on finance and then later the accountability and transparency measures. And uh, those are really, really important components of nonprofit effectiveness, but we know they're not the only ones. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's so, a, it's a yeah. super interesting. I mean, that just the, there's so much of a commitment um, right now. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mean like right now as in in the midst of, our current Pandemic, reality with COVID-19, right? right. But, <laughs> but um, let's say over the last six to 18 months, there's been such an increased or enhanced investment in how we measure mm -hmm. on so many fronts, right? In terms of how we measure loyalty with uh, the people who contribute and donate uh, or how we measure effectiveness that, you know, it's amazing that we're at this point in time where we have this convergence of technology and, uh, and philanthropy that has right. given us the opportunity. And, and I love that Charity Navigator is investing like uh, investing in people like you and, and in projects like evolving the ratings because it is important and it will be incredibly important, especially as we get on the other side of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right as as you see the current kind of health crisis transform into um, economic impact, right. Of right? How people are looking at um, the uh, the responsible nature of charitable organizations. So um, while we're in the midst of the pandemic, what what does that look like for the Charity Navigator team in the last week to ten days? Um, what does life look like for for yeah. your team? Well, I, uh, um, certainly we like, like everyone else sort of transitioned to, to working remote and getting used to and renorming what that hmm. sort of what that means for, for the organization. I don't think, um, while we're making adjustments to plans, I don't think to date we're, we're getting ourselves thrown off, but we have added a bunch of, you know, bunch of work and trying to be responsive to um, to COVID-19 COVID and the pandemic. Um, a couple of highlights on that. Um, we did the obligatory CEO email to uh, which everyone got from every company that they've ever signed up for and yeah. they didn't know about. Um, right. uh, we did that for our donors and users of, of the website. We also did it for the nonprofits that uh, interact with us on the site. Um, we put together a, a list that which is expanding um, in terms of nonprofits that are re responding to COVID-19 in different ways. The highlight of last week was uh, Barack Obama tweeting out a link to um, uh, to, to the page that we had created. Um, uh, highlight B was was William Shatner <laughs> also <laughs> tweeting out a link. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Uh, Both of those equally yeah. incredible <laughs> with big, their own big, weight. <laughs> big gets maybe with uh, different audiences. And so, um, uh, so we're really proud about, you know, sort of the sort of the public service we can provide in, in connecting donors to, um, to information that's relevant and nonprofits that are responding. We're going to do a, this Friday at noon, we're, we're going to put something out either tonight or tomorrow. We're going to do a webinar, uh, sort of a donor town hall, hmm. and allow donors who use the platform to sort of hear from folks, um, hear from hear from a couple institutional funders and uh, who are sort of 
headlong in the game, perhaps even the Gates Foundation, um, and hear from some individual nonprofits that are responding, uh, and just sort of sort of helping donors sort of um, make sense of what's happening and mm -hmm. and and invest their sort of what could be more limited philanthropic dollars uh, even more wisely, more intelligently. That's great. That's great. I, I assume that uh, folks can ultimately go to charitynavigator.org, find information about that town hall uh, as yes. the information gets put up. Okay, we'll be sure yep. and, and make sure that that is um, pushed out amongst our channels. So um, transitioning into some of the ongoing work and some of the sure. work that, that your team has been charged with uh, in a post last week on LinkedIn, uh, just how we connected you you shared that uh, that this is an inflection point now you weren't again referring to the pandemic although maybe escalates it in some ways but right. this this is an inflection point we're at an inflection point for charity navigator and um, I'd love for you to speak to that and talk mm -hmm. about the key opportunities that uh, you and your team have identified in terms of charity navigators current work and its ongoing work and its future work sure no it's a there's a lot there to unpack um, so the first thing is, is that we, we only rate around 9,000 nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the sector is much bigger. And so we're sort of doing a little bit of a disservice, frankly, um, by not um, sort of conveying some sort of trust indicator to a much wider set of organizations. So, you know, if you do a search for that, you know, soup kitchen in your local community, we might not be rating them. They mm -hmm. still might be a really good organization. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we want to make sure that we're providing some sort of trust indicator to a much larger scale of, of organizations. And we've got, we've got the data to do it. We just didn't sort of have the system to do it because mm -hmm. the current um, uh, sort of four-star rating system has some pretty tight constraints. It, it really is a, there's a, million dollar budget size there's you know sort of a public funding versus um sort of uh donations that you're getting sort of ratio you want to meet at least seven years of irs forms filed those things um are really important to that to that rating system um and so we're we're sort of putting that aside to conceive of a of a new world where we're can conveying trust to a much larger scale and we're looking at other aspects of, of nonprofit effectiveness um, and, and rolling out new measures on some sort of consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the, um, the task at hand. And I just, just, just to note, there's a lot of brand value that we've built in this four star rating system. Oh, absolutely. There is. And, and we know um, a lot of development, operations of nonprofits really leverage that rely on it and so we know we've got to disrupt ourselves but hmm. at least for now we did not want to disrupt the nonprofits that are using that system for their fundraising yeah, if, yeah. If that makes sense no it totally makes sense um, so yeah so that's so that's sort of like that sort of sets the stage and 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 so now we're 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 you know conceiving of what are the types of things that, that we want to talk about or nonprofits want to, the way they want to talk about themselves and their effectiveness. So we're thinking about things like uh, reputation. You know, uh, we know social media and media is really big right now. And so how are nonprofits being perceived and how are they engaging their audiences uh, on these new channels? We want to be looking at that. Um, we are obviously program impacts. That's sort of the holy grail of, of, of measurement, as you were talking about how we're mm -hmm. thinking about how we're doing more measurement in the sector. Um, so, so that's obviously a component. We've done some experimentation around that and, and we're going to do more. Um, it's, it's a tough issue at scale to wrap our head around. How do you how do you how do you compare apples and oranges for organizations that have yeah. different missions and um, but say something to the donor who's trying to make sense of this about what kind of impact is the organization making in the world? How are they delivering on their mission? Yeah, um, we're also thinking about equity, diversity, and inclusion as as a as a sort of as a 
set of measures that are that are really increasingly important, especially from institutional donors who have a big emphasis on it. We're also, um, you know, thinking about things like leadership and strategy and people and um, how do we, how do and volunteers and how do we sort of quantify all of that into into a measurement system? So it's really, as you can see, sort of the full scope yeah. of, of what a nonprofit's engaged in, and we're we're really humble about this at the outset. We we want to be engaging the sector and helping us think through these issues. Um, we want to engage subject matter experts in each one of these fields to help us get um, a little bit more grounding where where we don't really have the expertise and um, you know that, that, that we're, we're we know it needs to be done and, and and so we want to catalyze that and and we we're approaching it from a perspective of being agile knowing we're going to have to make changes knowing we're going to make mistakes and um being in a position where we want to iterate over time yeah and grow and change and evolve i think that um we've seen the the necessity of communicating effectiveness and the necessity of communicating impact becomes so much more increasingly important uh, and, and, you know, I, I reflect a lot on conversations that I have on a, a study that we had done uh, about a year and a half ago now after December 2018 and giving had uh, not reached the potential that everyone thought it was going to. And then, you know, in subsequent December this past year, it, it rebound, rebounded. But in a, uh, in a survey and a study to people who give to four or more organizations annually, after December 2018, the primary reason that people said that they didn't give, of which one in five didn't give, uh, was that they didn't feel a connection. And many mm -hmm. times that connection, when you press into it, um, one of the things is that they want to prioritize organizations where they can see the best impact. So um, no longer is a badge the only way to articulate your impact and to your point no longer is the the traditional or the current four-star system the only way to measure impact right. yeah and so That's it's right. you know it's a, a super interesting uh, project and a, a massive project how can uh, how can folks participate how can nonprofit decision makers uh, be involved in this process or provide feedback or or integrate um, with you and your team along the way? Yeah, great question. So um, a number of ways. Uh, one way is uh, we've, we've got a blog series, as you noted, and we're gonna, you know, as we go through the process, be as like transparent as we possibly can and be sort of receiving feedback on that channel, receiving re feedback on the social channels. We connected on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, I'm ant anticipating that we hear, hear some feedback uh, beyond that on, this, on that channel and, and others. Um, we have done a number of interviews. We're going to be uh, standing up an advisory board of, and there'll be an application process for that. Um, so we want to have some formal structures in place as well. Um, ultimately, we, uh, you know, are also going to be um, expanding our nonprofit portal to a lot, to a much larger swath of nonprofits because a lot more nonprofits are going to be rated. And so there's going to be opportunities to participate with us on, within the nonprofit portal that we have. Um, you know, and then finally, uh, we're, you know, we're going to be making conscious efforts to to be to be reaching and touching as many folks as possible as we launch this first indicator, which is really sort of a base basic organizational health check metric. Um, we're going to be doing webinars. We're going to be listening uh, to folks in those webinars and afterwards, um, and asking people to participate. Where we've got a little survey. Um, on the site now and it's at the end of the blog we've already had 650 responses in, awesome. in a week you know so awesome. we know people are interested in, in in what's happening and if you take that survey you'll get a sense of we're thinking through like the visuals of the system what's really important to you in terms of how you think about a nonprofit before you make a donation um 
So there's going to be a, a real mix of sort of listening on different channels, quantitative analysis, engaging experts. Um, you know, I think it, we're trying to be as comprehensive as possible in our listening and sense making. Yeah, that's uh, that's fantastic. As you've gone through and identified the the requirements today, knowing that they are bound to evolve, um, yeah. what sense of timing do you have around this project and uh, when we would see a baseline of of a new rating system in the market? Sure, sure. Um, so we're going to go to to for each one of these measures, we're going to do a beta, sort of a closed beta. Uh, engage the nonprofits that are part, you know, that end up getting the rating, listen, and then sort of launch it publicly. And the idea is every three to four months to do a new indicator. Hmm. Uh, and then also be doing revisions to old indicators or indicators we've previously done on a similar, you know, uh, sequencing. And, um, you know, the the idea is that at the beginning of May to have this baseline basic organizational health check uh, that's really a little bit more of our bread and butter around finance and accountability and transparency. Mm -hmm. It was something we developed to, um, as I'm saying, to provide some trust indicator to a much larger set of organizations. So we're going to go to market with that, but it's going to be in this sort of all encompassing system where we anticipate other um, sort of metrics or indicators to be part of the system over time. Okay. We'll just slot those in maybe every three or four months. And you don't anticipate it at this point in time. We don't anticipate that our current reality is impacting that timeline. You're still full steam ahead towards May <laughs> as the ideal <laughs> launch point. Yeah. You know, the, the world is changing so quickly, right? Yeah. Uh, I think we're trying, I think there's nothing to date that, that would, um, sort of stop that but you know this could change tomorrow with yeah it's true, it's true. <laughs> as we've uh, learned on the hour we need to you know i'll check our twitter feeds and see yeah what's uh, next. we've we've engaged some really great um ux folks to help us think through the, the the conceptual design of the system they're all working remotely they're yeah. you know the folks at second melody and they're they're um you know working remotely with us on it you yeah. know so i don't i don't necessarily anticipate any big changes to the timeline, but we'll see. Well, um, Stephen, what I, you know, whenever you were kind of speaking about your path and your journey to get here, something that you said, and maybe it was intentional, maybe it just kind of came out, but I think it's a, a, a important point to reiterate is that um, from the get-go of your transition into the space that you were looking for the fastest path to impact. And uh, that's certainly right. where you are today. And, yeah. uh, and so I applaud the work that you and your team are doing to help us get to a faster, more efficient, more well-rounded uh, path and, and place to measure impact. Great. Thank you. All right, man. Well, uh, I appreciate your time and, yeah. and thanks for offering your thoughts on uh, what's happening and, and how we're measuring it along the way. And um, we'll encourage folks to be sure and check out char charitynavigator.org. Uh, and to check out LinkedIn, they can connect with you there to keep uh, an eye and, and engage in the process. Great. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, have a good one.